Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros, kids. Uh, this guest was actually um, selected by you, uh, the listeners. Uh, we go live typically on YouTube every day. Obviously, we're shadow banned. Um, the 10.3 million listeners we have uh, does not translate into Google, apparently, because... Uh, they don't want us to, to have any videos out there, especially on the conservative side of things or even chatting about it, it seems. Uh, but a couple weeks ago, uh, you guys were in the message boards and you said, hey, if you can, uh, get Amanda Milius on the show. Uh, she directed this movie called The Plot Against the Presidents. And as soon as I saw your name, Dan and I were live on air and I was like, this has got to be John Milius' daughter. Mm. <laughs> it has That's to be. A lot of people, yeah, people, it's such a rare name that people ask me that. Like, they're like, oh, are you related to John Millius? But only on the right. I mean, unless they're like major, major movie fans, most people don't, um, the name doesn't like stick in your head. It's not like Spielberg or something where it like really sticks in people's head unless they're a fan. But uh, yeah, it's pretty unique. Yeah, I, obviously I'm a huge fan, which we'll get to later on. But more importantly, I want to chat about your film because I'm a I'm a huge fan of it. And apparently so is the world. Now, obviously you wouldn't know it by the media, but you, you're currently number one on Amazon. Uh, the movie is called The Plot Against the Presidents. And uh, it deals with uh, a topic that Dan has been covering for close to three years here on this show uh, as far as Russiagate goes. Um, and the the fake collusion and everything else that went on. Um, when I it's a classic. I mean, you you hear it over and over the phrase Intel operation in her film mm -hmm. over and over again. It's uh, Evans been take, talking about it, not necessarily about Trump specifically. About uh, their their premise is that Russia's big plan is to uh, emasculate American males. You know what I mean? That's that's his theory. I mean, it's broader, obviously, but yeah, I mean, we we've been talking about it for quite a, a while now. Quite and, a while, yeah. and and how the like there was nothing to it. The Steele dossier, there was nothing to it. Um, what I my biggest fear was going into your film was that it was going to be like a, a Dinesh D'Souza movie, and I know yeah. he was in your doc. I know, I, and I hate saying he's that. Not, he's not in my doc. Oh, he's not in your doc. No, okay, great. No. Um, okay, he was on the trailer afterwards. Uh, you guys are connected oh, on yeah, on he, Amazon. People probably do that where they play both trailers back to back. Correct. But it's totally separate. I mean, yeah. his, his movie was, uh, I think, cost $12 million to make or something around there. And or he had like a, a three or four million dollar advertising budget. Ours was zero. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, different, different, uh, different playing field. Yeah. And, and, and the thing that I disliked about his films, um, obviously, I'm a Hollywood guy, um, is it, it they don't they seem hokey and slanted and it's just. You know, it's a lot of stock footage that you're like and, and scary music where you're like, oh, well, this is ominous that's happening. And you you don't really well, believe in you it. Know what it is? It's like, OK, so I've said this a lot and it's no this is no criticism of the other conservative filmmakers, because frankly, we need them. If you think about how much media and how much um, material the left is putting out there, like, thank God for every right leaning filmmaker and everything they do. I don't care if every single movie is about Jesus and abortion, like fine, go for it, whatever. <laughs> thing is is that a lot of these folks they are issue based um political people first and then they're like oh i'm gonna make a movie about this or i'm gonna write a book about this and then i'll just make a movie because god knows they think if you've seen a movie you can make a movie whereas yeah. i came from this i went to usc film school i have a master's degree in uh film production and i've done film or um the visual industries uh, whether it's photography or this, that, or the other, um, in some way, edit, I started my, one of my first jobs, I was an editor. Um, it's, uh, I've done this for over 10 years, like well over 10 years since I was a teenager. And, um, I come at this from a, as from being a filmmaker and I'm not saying that as like a, you know, tooting my own horn or whatever, but it's just the difference between coming at something as a political person who wants to make movies or a movie person who happens to have become political. Right. So it's it's a different um, it's a different thing. I mean, like, yeah, for me, I prefer, you know, there's different ways to make documentaries. I prefer no narration. I don't like a narration because I feel like it's, it's cheating. Lean, lean hokey. Yeah. And yeah. I really I will never do a reenactment ever. In my I swear to God, I will never, <laughs> I will never make a reenactment in a movie. Well, no if somebody what. if somebody's trying to deliver me information and they're trying to uh, change the setting whether it be the actual physical location the backdrop 
the music, the tone of voice, or, or anything like that, along with information, then I'm immediately suspicious of that information. Correct. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's like watching uh, Making a Murder or whatever the fuck that shit was. Yeah. Or any of those like documentaries. They're not documentaries. It's nonsense, right? They take shit out of context all the time. And uh, you never know what the fuck's really going on. Just give me the information. I will decide. Uh, I, I, I hate. You don't need to editorialize. Right. Right. Yeah. You got to treat your audience with, as though they have some level of intelligence right. and just say, you're either going to follow this or you're not. I mean, we were really risking it because, frankly, we had to make the movie so fast that normally you have this whole you know, even if you're rushed, you have this luxurious process of like, oh, we're going to play it for these people. And they're all going to be I mean, our idea was to play it for people of different levels of political involvement mm -hmm. um, who like people who followed Russiagate every single day. You know, certain people who have other podcasts or um, or journalists or whatever that they were completely read in on the situation and then play it for like my mom who doesn't like watching the news or whatever, play it for people that are totally out of it and make sure it could work for everybody. We didn't have time to do that. So we played it for me and my editor and then, and, and the rest of our team. And that was it. And then we were like, we're rolling this out. This is going now. And thankfully it seems like it really did hit that stride where people, people get it who, who were totally read in on, on Russiagate and the hoax and, and all of this that, you know, are living in DC and have all this information at their fingertips and, and folks who aren't keeping up with the daily declassified, you know, dumps as they come. Yeah. Cause you know, what I enjoyed again was, uh, it seemed to be based in fact, it was uh, very conversational. Like, you know, there wasn't, uh, uh, there was only one guy who was in a shadow at, at one point, um, who obviously you yeah. couldn't reveal. But... Actually there's two, there's two. And technically we had a third and he'll, the third guy will appear in the extended series extended cut series thing that we're going to do um yeah yeah there's no not too many unidentified people and the ones that we have are pretty cool yeah i yeah i, I don't know who they are in real life obviously but uh I, you know i'll ask you off air maybe you can tell me yeah. one look like since you're in vegas one looked like carrot top so maybe maybe carrot yeah. top was in on it we don't know what he had in that trunk and, and what he was doing for the government but uh you know obviously we can rap about it later what if we found out you remember that movie uh confessions of a dangerous mind mm -hmm. remember that guy that yeah. was a game show host and allegedly a, for the gong uh, show allegedly he was a knock he was it was knocking people off for the agency uh what if like gallagher was that guy a gallagher <laughs> what or if we let's make a movie where gallagher that whole time he was performing was a fucking contract killer for the agency i'll i'll go a step further yeah. trebek just passed away coincidence wow. i don't think so i don't think so i don't think Ill so illuminati confirmed <laughs> let me ask you though was there a coincidence in your film with the release date? um did you guys intend on going this quickly before the election um what was the thought process and planning behind that because uh usually um you don't really get to pick your release date and i'm sure you were trying to hope for theaters but then mm -hmm. covid hit um well technically we, we are in theaters. We're still in theaters, but the COVID thing really wiped theaters out in general. So I didn't spend yeah. a ton of time worrying about that because it was more important to just get it out. Um, I did. So like I like I said, I've worked in film a long time and I know how to I mean, I, I know as much as I can about how to get something to hit a certain release date. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't going to let it not be released. There was no way it wasn't going to come out at least a month before the election. Like that was the whole point. I right. wanted it at that, that time. Um, and so the reason I didn't do an exclusive deal with Amazon or a Netflix or anybody like that um, is because if that's how they kill things, you know, that's what, what happened to hoax is that I think they had a semi-exclusive deal initially with Amazon and mm. then Amazon kind of did the catch and kill thing where it put it up for a day and then pulled it down. And then you legally can't go put it up anywhere else. Right. So I didn't sign any deal like that. Everything we did, people looked at me and they were like, this is totally insane. Like, this isn't how you do things. And I was like, I actually think it is. I think this will work because I think our audience will come to us. So um, I could have sold it. I basically told the distributor, I was like, I'll sell this at a lemonade stand if I have to, but it's coming out before the election. Like, I'm not, I don't care if, you know, some massive company offers me some amazing deal to, to sit on it and put it out later. Mm -hmm. It's not happening. So, you know, we're still like, for example, the DVDs are still being manufactured. We're going to have those ready for the holidays, but it's like we're still rolling it out on platforms. Like that, that's how fast you were gunning it out. Yeah. Let's. Oh, it, we were coloring it 20, less than 24 hours. We were coloring the movie 
And then it was up on the internet less than 24 hours later. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, the, even the render process on that. Yeah. Um... That, no, it was rendering into the upload. It was like, <laughs> like we're go I was like, I, I can't believe there's not any mistakes in it. I literally, I final watched it um, on the first platform. It was live on. No shit. Even if you're using like a, like a Mac garbage can, one of those... You're probably still talking four hours to export a movie that size. Oh, oh boy. At minimum, with probably eight, yeah. I would say. Well, yeah. no, with a with a garbage can, you could probably get it down to four. But he, that's <laughs> that's a fifteen thousand dollar rig. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We had a um, we our editor has a uh, hardwired um, internet connection, which we had to use to get it to yeah. the distributor and then put it up. And the the first platform uh, was supposed to be special.io, which is so. There's two new platforms we opened it with. Like we released on specialproject.io mm. and uh, my movies plus both are new platforms that launched with our movie they're free speech friendly and they're like a they're kind of like a cross between patreon and youtube where it's like it's for longer content and you you know you have subscribers you pay for it but they won't take anything they're not going to take it down like they're they're not going to be pushed around yeah so i guess they've, rumble's they've, the other one like that now right yeah, yeah. Well, Rumble yeah. is is coming up, um, but uh, I have not heard of the two that you were talking yeah. about. Um, yeah, I'm not. Specialproject.io. .io, .io, and then uh, the other one's My Movies Plus, and they're both Patriot owned. They're um, you know they're just cool guys, and I uh, yeah. We, but then we got it finally on Vimeo two days later, where it did insanely well, which is crazy because most people couldn't even get the app to work on their TV, yeah, and then yeah. finally Vimeo. twelve days later they. Finally, Amazon released it. I mean, Amazon had it the same day as all those other channels um, and they put it under extended content review. And only after the Hollywood Reporter wrote an article about them screwing over conservative movies, um, did they put it out? Yeah, I had a problem with a, mm. uh, my last book on Amazon. Uh, same thing. They pulled it for three weeks. Same thing, a, a content review. Um, and they were, they were proofing it and, you know, they fi suddenly finally read it. I was just like, just read the fucking book. Um, <laughs> they were literally judging it by its cover and, uh, and then it got yep. put up later. Like, I think it was like three and a half weeks later. And then our listeners had called in and bitched and everything else. Um, what was the process for you? Because when I, when I went through with Amazon, you can't ever talk to the yeah. person you want to talk to at Amazon. And I don't know who the top guy is, nor does anybody else. My agents, managers, no right. one knows who that guy is. What was it like for your film? Who did you reach out to? No, there's no one. You reach out to the same thing where you're like, when is this going to come out? And they give you a canned response that's mm -hmm. like, oh, and you never hear from them for days and days and days. And you're sitting there on the edge of your seat because you're like, well, am I going to put this out on another platform or are they going to put it out? It's ridiculous. Um, I've got somebody that's friends with folks that are pretty high up there that I'm going to look into to see like who the hell put this under an extended content review and like what what is that process because they want to claim that they're not partisan and all that, um, which is just obviously not true. Yeah, but, it's bullshit. Um, yeah. But um, no, it was it was ridiculous. You and I would try to explain it to like you know the investors or to the fans or whoever that was like, when is it? Give me a date. Like or or the uh, you know folks we were doing uh, promotional stuff with. Like, what is the date that it's going to be available on Amazon? And I have to say, I'm, I don't know. It's whenever they feel like putting yeah, it no up. Shit. Yeah. I, and I bet you're flipping through uh, your smart TV, the same as everybody else to see if it's yeah. up because you don't get an email or anything from them. It's just, it's yeah, up and that's it. Back end. Yeah. We have our account with them on the back end so we can see the process like, oh, it's like, it's, you know, in review or whatever. But then the funny thing is, is that, so I didn't make a deal with them. Like they didn't know this movie was even coming. Like, it's not like. I had like some office meeting with them, like you would if you had an exclusive deal. Um, they, we just put it up on the back end via our distributor. Um, and uh, and so now it's their number one documentary. Um, it's the number one political documentary of all time at this point. Yep. Like it's just blown past Fahrenheit 50, 450, everything, mm -hmm. Fahrenheit 911, like all of it. Like it's way bigger than all of those. And um, and now it's, it's sitting there still. It's been at number one on their documentaries for like two weeks. And it's they they must be kind of like what the hell like they they didn't even know this it was coming to them yeah like, new york times pulled that shit with us uh you expect to see some manual manipulation of that soon when uh oh yeah when matt best book uh and ross uh was the author of that came out we noticed that in the top 20 uh the new york times and it wasn't based on sales because you can look the sales numbers up independently mm -hmm. um yeah. 
Matt never made it. He was at, I think, two for a while, but he never made it to number one. So, well, it opened up at number five, like a, a, a book four, about our, I wrote about our co host. Yeah. yeah. So, it opened up at number five on the New York Times bestseller list. They put Michelle Obama's book ahead of it and everything else. But it was number one in USA Today, Wall Street Journal, and everything else. In sales, it was number one. And then number. We had to wait for the Publishers Weekly yeah. reports to come out on Friday to see what the actual hard copies yeah. were. And we'd wow. outsold Michelle Obama by 23,000 copies. Yeah. And, wow. But yeah. here's, here's the thing. And if you looked on Amazon's list, by the way, under political books, it was, I think, eight conservatives and two liberal books, essentially, if you want to frame it that way. Uh, and yeah. then on, on the New York Times list, the only other anything approaching conservative was Mark Levin's book of the yeah, yeah, like yeah. that was it. Yeah. Out of out of the top fifteen, it was just Matt's book, your book, and and those two total. Yeah, well, just, there's no way. Do they don't? So they're always telling me like, oh yeah, Hollywood doesn't discriminate against conservatives because they just care about what makes money. Like they'll just put things out if it makes money. And you're like, okay, so let's look at this. The moment you put out anything that isn't the exact mainstream merit uh, media narrative that is, you know, somewhat. Uh, it, my movie is not even that partisan it's not even hyperbolic it's like it just tells the story as it is and it shoots to number one that means a huge audience like our when we released the trailer um the trailer crashed the hollywood reporter's site because that's where we released the trailer was on the hollywood reporter yeah they, they play trailers for a living yep. it's not like it's the first time they put a trailer up on their site that's what they do and it crashed their site because that's how many people wanted to see it that tells you they're ignoring the entire country that's how many people are being ignored by this industry. And, and how much it goes to show you how much money it can make. So if you yeah. did make conservative movies, you'd make a shit ton of money. And that's what Hollywood typically is all about. It seemed yeah. to have changed with the 2016 election and all bets were off and it all went out the window with your film in particular. And like my last book, when you try to tell people this, a lot of the people look at you like you're insane. They're like, yeah. this can't be our country. This can't be. What's yeah, really going on where you're censored, it, it is. Yeah, I think it's woken. I think the last two weeks have woken up a lot of people because uh, if, if they weren't already made aware of how close to communist China we are by the last year or so, they are aware now. I mean, when you see stuff like the warnings that they have on the president's tweets or anybody's tweet yep. that's literally saying the truth, that's the craziest thing is, I mean, I, like I said, I'm on, I'm on the ground in Nevada and I know that it like what is being tweeted out from like our the account that, uh, associated with the campaign I'm I'm with over here, uh, which is in uh, Nevada GOP. Um, they put the warning on their stuff. And I'm like, this is factually proven, correct information. And Twitter is telling the audience right. that this is just that this is disputed. I mean, we are living in. <laughs> I just didn't realize it was going to be 1984 this fast, not to right. be cliche, but yeah. it's so Orwellian it is, and yeah. you're walking around and there's everybody's in masks at the casino. And it's just like, it's so creepy. Like what we're living in right now, these last two weeks, I I'm just like taking it all in. Like, it's like, we're really in this time period, aren't we? Like it's, it's so creepy. Yeah, it is very bizarre. Uh, I think it was a miscalculation on behalf of whomever's trying to uh, do all this stuff. Maybe uh, it's a test balloon. A we'll see. But I think uh, you, if you're trying to divide and conquer, giving people a single standard to rally around is not a good idea. And yeah. keeping them shut inside their houses and taking their ability to earn their own money away is not a good idea. I think they went a little bit too far. I, it seems like there might be some kind of coordinated effort to see what the tolerance of the American people exactly. is. That's for, what it looks like. You know what else somebody said out here I was talking to? This was a good one. They said it's a visual gauge. The last year has been a visual gauge for them to see how easy it is to uh, fool people with the media or to yeah. get them to behave in a certain way, you know? Yeah, um, I think that's probably true. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. And, and to that point, like one of the things on IMDb, which is the only movie site we have right in our industry, that's it. There is yeah. no other thing uh, that tells you. Uh, and it's, how about the fact that it's the worst site? Not even talking about how <laughs> messed up it is where it lets you, it lets people uh, review bomb it. And it's, it's bad. It is literally like going back and programming a computer in 1989. And they're like proud of this. Like IMDb is like, you can be a member of IMDb Pro and we'll give you a star meter. And you're like, <laughs> you guys are a joke. Like it's the worst site of all time. It, you know who owns it, right? 
Amazon. Amazon, yeah. Amazon yeah. owns it. Um, but one of the fun facts. Well, they also our, own the, uh, the Washington Post. They also the Washington Post. Yeah. yeah. They and they just, tried to, they just tried to buy CNN last week, too. <laughs> Not, I mean, Bezos tried to buy CNN last week. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, Bezos tried to buy CNN. But what, do you, what, what, what do you think he's after there? Because CNN's doing so well, he wants to fucking add that to his portfolio? No. No. He wants to control news. He man. wants Come to on. push his own agenda. Yeah, fucking break. You control news, you control reality. I yeah. mean, it's well, literally clearly. like. Having a, a, it's literally like Dr. Evil. I mean, that's what I don't understand. They're, they're like, I will control the entire world's reality. It's like, you guys are, they're so blatantly evil. It's insane. Mm. It's, it's crazy. And, you know, speaking of which, like one of our listeners on IMDb had circled, uh, you know, they have these like fun facts about the movie. Um, I haven't even looked at that. Oh God, what is it? Yeah, say? a listener sent it in. It said, uh, oh, no. it said, none of the facts in this movie could be proven. Um, so you're it's welcome on that transcripts. No, but that's the, funniest <laughs> thing. that's the funniest thing. So I see that now after this, so the president tweeted the movie out I, I about a week ago or less. Yes. And so ever since then, and he said highly rated, which is great because we, we did, we had five star rating with more reviews than like any other, any other documentary. Um, which is crazy. I think now it's up to 12,000 reviews or something or no, it's yeah. It's like insane. Yeah. Um, and uh, and so he did that. And then, of course, the left catches on to it and they're all like review bombing it. And you can totally tell the reviews by people mm. who haven't seen it because they're like, this is just propaganda. None of this is real. These aren't facts. And you're like, actually, it's not hyperbolic. The movie is only facts. Every I had a, a very, very good lawyer make sure that every single thing I said was absolutely fact and mm. provable by my sources or others that are really, really strong because I'm not going to get sued, right? Like I yeah. had to get insured to put this out. Like, it's not a joke. It's real. If it was horseshit, I wouldn't have been able to uh, put it out. Like it's, you know, I don't know these people that put out stuff like just on YouTube or whatever. It's free. You don't have the right. same standard of um, legal responsibility. Like I'm, I'm solid. Like that is, it is a solid, there's not one thing that's said in there that can't be backed up. Yeah, and one of the guys in the movie, Matt Gates, was on our show about what three or four weeks ago. Yep. And uh, when I saw him in there, I was like, "Oh, all right, great!" Like you know, him and Devin and those guys, like yeah. th those are pretty legit guys. They're not the really ones in the. They're the. They're the. I mean, um, Devin Nunes this is the point we try to make. I mean, he was the chairman of the Intel Committee, like for years. Like, mm -hmm. what? What more do you want? Like, the guy is a hundred. He's the most read in person in Congress. Um, on the activities of the intelligence community. Like and, how there's no one else. And he is, he has nothing really to gain financially or, or, or anything else by proving this. As a matter of fact, you know, most po politicians lose. just rest on, on whatever salary it is, you know, have mm -hmm. their assistants do the work, read the bills, give them uh, some quick notes. And then they go on yeah. about their day. He actually took the time for years to try to figure this out and didn't get paid for it at all. So no, and he ruined his life. I mean, that's the thing that and, and this is the same theme um, of what's happening here in Nevada. Um, you know, I'm talking to some of the, the campaign uh, surrogates that are out doing press for us right now and all this stuff. And you're like, people are like, oh, well, they're just lying to stuck up to the Trump administration. And you're like, to what end? Mm -hmm. Like, this is not this like people are being fired from their law firms for even having anything to do with this. Like every single person that is is involved in telling the truth right now about this election or telling the truth um, about Russiagate, the stuff that Devin Nunes did, it is to their detriment mm. to tell the truth. So you know they're courageous. They're not, they're they're opposite of career opportunities. That was the funniest thing where I'm like, yeah, because I, I people in, in my comments sometimes they're like, oh, well, you only made this movie because you worked in the Trump administration and you worked in the Trump administration. So of course you could make a movie about the president. And you're like, yeah, because it's a real um fast track to a, a career in movie making to leave Hollywood and work for the Trump administration. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. The you should do, like. you'd have a better shot as epstein rather than making a conservative <laughs> movie to to be on a fast track in hollywood uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm curious where you go after this because i know how bad it is out there um you know i was in it for 18 years and made you know 30 movies yeah. or whatever it was like even then before trump got elected you really couldn't say who you you liked there was oh. some, there was some, uh, uh, i used to tell people this all the time they never believed me there was an underground group that used to meet it's called foa FOA? yeah, yeah friends friends of of i mean it's yeah. not it's yeah. not that underground i think no, I was, nick cersey is still oh, the president of it right now i think well no but the people that were in it w would shock you where i was just like oh shit like it yeah. used to be like ron yeah. howard and like uh the creator yeah. of Desperate howard Housewives. gary sinise sorbo i mean there's a yeah, Kevin uh, sorbo, uh, yeah. chuck 
Uh, there's a bunch of dudes in there. Yeah. 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 There's more than that too. There's a lot of folks that um, I happen to know are conservative or at least more okay with hanging out with conservatives than you would think these days, just because my dad is kind of like, he's kind of like this crossover because he's such a character, mm. such like a established kind of, you know, he's, he's just so, I know he's different. They don't really see him just as like a conservative guy. <clears throat> so I know a, a lot of people in Hollywood, you'd be really surprised are, are down to go to the gun range and mm. smoke cigars and hang out and talk. Yeah, about absolutely. But you still had to meet, you know, once every two months or whatever it was, I get invited a few times, um, yeah. you know, at some, at some, uh, weird Far. location. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you were like, all right, sweet. Are we, we're just talking about like being Republican, right? Like no, that's all like we're a, doing here. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's a, it makes you that, I mean, that's a sign of like massive decline in the country where you're like to be one of the two, like, what do these people want? Do they want a one party country? It's like, it's like, you're yes. not allowed to have a two party country. Like you're just, you're not even there for some wacky party. That's really fringe. That's like some up and coming extremist thing. It's like, you're just a Republican and you can't meet in public. It's yeah. crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, there was nothing else that went on there because you you walk in when you know when your first time and you're you're yeah. kind of looking around. And you're like, sweet, is this <laughs> like is this? Am I here for the gangbang or? Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're like, oh no, we're just going to talk about Republican shit. All right, cool. Because I'm wondering yeah. like how many dicks are going to be at my face in like 18 <laughs> minutes. But um, but that's what well, it like, felt like. And you're where's like, the, where's like this the ritualistic like like spooky shit happening? You're like, yeah, like you have to have a password and you have to be vetted first. Mm. Like you go to that first meeting and then they <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. You like, you know, talk about your politics just to make sure you're not like a. a it's uh, like uh, telling somebody to snort this line of cocaine before I bust out the real drugs. Yeah, exactly. Like, you got <laughs> to show me you're cool first before I bring out my uh, DMT vape pen, my man. Yeah. Yeah. You got you to gotta prove your loyalty. It's yeah. bloods or crips. You pick. You got to yeah, choose. Yeah, you got to choose. Yeah. Um, are we allowed to talk about what you're doing in Las Vegas for the, the Trump campaign right now? There's no rules anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. There aren't. Um, no, but what's going to happen? What am I going to do? Are they going to fire me? Like, I don't know. Like, no, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing in Vegas for the uh, Trump campaign currently? Uh, I'm helping with communications because I basically the the long and short of it is actually kind of a crazy story. I uh, I worked in Nevada and Clark County in 2016. I volunteered here. That's how I ran away from L.A. and joined the circus of mm. politics is because I was volunteering in the closest swing state. And then I was just so into it. And I met like amazing people and I just loved it. And we won. Uh, somebody I was working with was like, you should go work in the administration. I was like, no, that's crazy. Why would I ever work in government? I hate the government. Um, and they're like, no, that's the point. Like we all do. That's why you got to go. I was like, oh, OK, that makes sense. Um, and uh, they were like, we need people that are unique and different and love the president's agenda and want to fight for the president's agenda. And I was like, yeah, that's what I want to do. Send me in, coach. Like, send me to wherever you want to go. So I went, I first worked at the inaugural committee, which is like a good kind of get your, get into the DC thing. Uh, you get your feet for, wet in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you meet people and you kind of like, you know, figure stuff out. And then I got hired at State Department as a uh, presidential political appointee. And so I was there for three years. I worked at the White House for six months, went back to State Department, um, left there, did the movie, toured the movie, like did press, stuff like that. And then I went to an, a party on election night, just like, you know, whatever it was two weeks ago. It feels like it's been 10 years or two days. It, it like, really oh, has. Shit. Yeah. I'm in like a time warp because so I went to this election night party at Ollie Alexander's uh, in Dallas. He rented a movie theater. And so obviously election happens. It looks crazy. Everybody's the phones are blowing up. Everyone's like, what the hell's going on? Um, I I had an uh, I did an episode of Infowars the next day. Oh, dude. So Alex Jones was on our live election show the night before. Yeah, so, I saw that. Oh, That's, yeah. I mean, yeah, we did the yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. So like I hadn't I've been talking to him like I've met him a bunch. He's actually a really big fan of my dad's, too. And so he like gets the whole like Hollywood. He, yeah, he's a big movie buff. He's a huge he's fan a of your dad. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're kind of the same guy. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. In the room, like you'd be like, oh, wow. Like So I'm very like comfortable around him because mm. it's like hanging out with my dad. It's very I'm, I'm totally a one with the chaos. So um so I went and did the Infowars episode in Austin and then um, everything was just going nuts. They were having rallies at all of the election counting places in Phoenix and Nevada. And I, I jump on a plane, go to Phoenix. Um, he goes to Phoenix. We all run to Phoenix and do this big rally. And then I get on the phone. So that's what, 48 hours after the election. And my whole team from 2016, we're all call each other. It's like the bat signal went up. 
um, we're all like, dude, we need to get back to Clark County. Like what is going on in Nevada? Like we got to go help our folks because two of our original team members are running the show here. Um, a guy named Jesse Law and a, an attorney um, that we worked with. And so we all just jumped on a plane and everybody showed up. So I'm still living out of the same suitcase that I had to go to a one night party. So I have a dress and a jacket. I've had to buy T-shirts like I've had like I don't have anything. I'm just still <laughs> here I'm in Nevada. Like I'm still like doing it. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm helping them with comms. Um, communication stuff, uh, media, um, press, whatever, and just assisting the legal team. And, and yeah, that was my next question. Are you a part of the recount that is going on in Nevada? And it's not a recount. So Nevada, there's a couple of states. So Georgia just had a recount, but it's really stupid because essentially they just recounted the fraud. Mm -hmm. um, that's the problem with this election is that the safeguards for elections that we ought to have are not even useful in this case because there's so much fraud and um, illegitimate ballots baked in to the number that recounting them is like just recounting counterfeit dollars. You're just like, OK, it doesn't mean I have more money or not. Um, so what we are out here, the the suit is to throw out, throw the elections, basically announce, uh, award the election to Donald Trump because we are able to show. And I mean, this is what it says in, in the case. Um, again, I'm not a lawyer, but uh, but it uh, able to show that when you look at all the fraud and look at all of the um, the discrepancies um, that it's such a massive amount that it would overcome the delta between uh, Biden and Trump. Um, I mean, we found so much stuff. It's insane. The fact that the media, I mean, I, I, again, I can't believe we're at this point already where I watched Fox News cut away from our press conference. Mm -hmm. But all they say all day long is, um, oh, they have no proof. There's no evidence. There, there's no evidence. OK, fine. So we have a stack of evidence of signed sworn affidavits, real human beings, whistleblowers, people that are willing to talk. Bring them to a press conference. Bring the thing, the stack of affidavits to a press conference. Mm -hmm. um, the folks that are representing the campaign out here, Matt Schlapp, Rick Grinnell, et cetera, they come out. They're about ready to do the press conference. Walk the media through the evidence. And Fox does this. And now back to our studio to talk about the COVID numbers. Mm. I mean, I couldn't <laughs> believe it. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, they literally won't tell people that this is a real thing. It's very interesting how Fox and Drudge have both pivoted away from Trump over the last couple of months. I don't know. That's Tucker crazy. Tucker Carlson last night. I, um, I don't know what to say about that. It's yeah. Did, did you did you watch that last night? Because he was trending last night and everybody was like, huh? Tucker, I, Tucker's even switched. Um, wait, what happened with I mean, Carlson last night? He 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 went off on Sidney Powell, which is not cool. Yeah. Well, yeah. look, I think a lot of people, myself included, are having this issue. I'm hearing a lot about all this. I'm, I'm hearing a lot of yeah, the <laughs> crack. Yeah. No, not about her specifically, but I'm hearing a lot about all this stuff that's going on. And I haven't seen any evidence of anything that's demonstrable. Well, like let me tell you why. Not, not to say that an affidavit oh, signed by a first hand witness is not evidence yes that is evidence but big stuff. you need you need corroboration yeah. right like you're not well, gonna so you're not gonna get a conviction based on just first-hand testimony unless it's a shit ton of people all from the same area you know well right? here's the thing so you're you're dealing with an issue that and i i agree because uh believe me everybody out here is also wanting to hear you know the national uh everybody everybody's on the edge of their seats but um here's the deal so the day or two after the election 48 hours later, the media is saying, oh, my God, they have no evidence. They're claiming fraud, fraud, fraud. Let me tell you what it looks like on the inside. You're sitting here with a team of 20 people, the fraud, the hotline. And this is where I worked in 2016. Again, I, I saw this before. It's again why I came back to Clark County. The fraud is out of control. The phone is ringing off the hook with our poll watchers who are like, holy cow, I was just prevented from even going in. They just took a box of ballots into a dark room and came out with a different box and put it in the machine. This happened, that happened. Oh my God, like I found a box of ballots in a storage unit. Like, I don't know what they're doing here, but they're all already marked. I found this, I felt like there's like crazy stuff. Um, and then you start looking at the data. So all of this is basically, you can't as a, as a campaign digest this and legally present, okay, it's 24 hours after we were ambushed in a field. Here is exactly how we were ambushed. First, this man shot us from the left. Then we had a sniper on this tree. Then we had some mines in the ground. That's what it's like. So you're in the fog of war where you just got 
ambushed, the right? Co coordinated attack. And everybody's like falling apart and like somebody's wounded and this is happening. And you're and the media is like, we don't believe you were ambushed because you can't describe to us exactly where the mines were and what kind of mine it was and what the serial number on the mine was. And you're like, I'm sorry, my ears are still ringing from the explosion. Like, hold on, let me try and find that for you. So it's like, because we're the victims in a sense, like not to say that in like a victim-y way, but you really are. We held a normal election and we were up against like a Chinese election or a, a third world like, oh, this person got 110 percent of the vote election. Like we were still playing like it was America. Like nobody told us that we were going to do Venezuela this year. So that 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 lag time in being able to put together everything that happened, like we're still discovering it. And, you're you know, you're chasing rabbit holes where it's like, OK, this is a real lead. This isn't you've got everything has to be reviewed through three or four people, you know, one sane person, one attorney, and then one sane attorney. And it's like, it's got to go through that step before you can present this stuff to the public. So, right. and then some of the stuff we can't um, publish because you've got, I mean, you have to understand Antifa and um, the left in general have put the fear in people so bad. And then you combine that with, um, you know, the internet doxing uh, world and then combine that with a union town, okay? Like a union town means that if you are found to, to be reporting fraud to us that uh, the union doesn't want reported, these people will never work again. Their families will never work again and they'll probably get beat up or killed because it's Vegas. Yeah, it's funny. So uh, uh, Las Vegas, by the way, for people that don't understand uh, unions and shit, La uh, Nevada's a right to work state, right? Mm -hmm. Which means that uh, unions only exist in so far as every member of that union is on board with what they're doing. Right. But it is the most tightly run group of people yes. I've ever seen in my life. Like the Bally's um, thing they had in the 90s, that, oh, yeah. that 13 year lawsuit or whatever. Mm -hmm. Every single person that worked at that hotel stayed in that lawsuit the entire time. Nobody broke ranks. Well, they're, and they're all because they're all extremely well paid in Vegas. And that's yeah. like that's something that nobody thinks about where it's like, you know, the people that work in the hotels, the casinos uh in the restaurants yeah. and all that stuff they're very well paid yeah. so they're it's not a, going anywhere no, it's a closed shop union and a right to work state and that's yeah. like that's like uh being on fire in antarctica basically right yeah. it's, it's almost yeah. impossible to accomplish something like that so there's if you look vegas was built by the goddamn mob right exactly yeah. Yeah. let's be real about that and then in the in the 40s 50s and 60s oh yeah vegas or the mob built that shit so of course it has that lingering influence um oh yeah but at the end of the day, like you said, the, I, 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 I'm hearing all the problems. What I'm not hearing are solutions from anybody. So what is the solution to? Uh, we're doing it. Well, no, well, I've, got, I've got it. I, I just want to let me frame the question. So there's a couple of different things going on. One is how to figure out what happened here. And I guess we can't really uh, diagnose and then, and then treat until we know exactly what happened. But we do know a couple of things. One is that certain types of voting are less secure than others. Mm -hmm. But then the general concept of voting when you add human beings to it, and there's no way to not have human beings, even if it's software, because you can put a backdoor in software that can be activated remotely if you want to. There's all kinds of ways to do that, and human interference is always gonna be a problem. So I guess the question is, how the fuck am I supposed to go out and vote in 2022, or four, or eight, or six, or eight, or whatever, and expect any of that shit to be legitimate? Well, I would actually turn it around and say, I might have a bizarrely optimistic view of humans, mm -hmm. but. I would much I'd be happy if this election had been run by humans with human error and human problems, because we've been doing elections that way since the beginning of our country. I don't have a problem with humans doing elections. What we had is machines mm -hmm. doing elections like in Nevada. You had two. you have the Dominion crap, which everybody's talking about, which sounds crazy, but it's it's actually real. Like, no, it's, it's definitely not crazy. My buddy, Joe. And that runs uh, a very large digital marketing company in Colorado is the one that uncovered all this stuff. Um, wow. He's, he's actually one of my business partners. And uh, the, the guy that was the chief security officer for Dominion, uh, you can see him in plain as day talking shit and about the Trump campaign mm -hmm. way before the election happened. Uh, you can also hear him on a phone call that will be published sometime soon saying uh, that there's no way Trump's going to win. I made sure of that. To yeah. a group yeah, can, of can you get him to put that. Speaking of us putting out evidence, can you get him to put that out sooner than later? I mean, <laughs> I can I can give you his phone number. You can talk to that him. That would about be it. let's do it. Yes. Like, can yeah, we get him out here. Like, yeah. yeah, when we get off when we get off air, we'll absolutely give you his, his number yeah. Uh, for sure. Yeah, because uh, what Dan I, I think is is saying, and and this is what I, I think is fifty fifty in America right now is 
uh, with the with the where is the proof thing, right? Well, the other what I was going to say, you want to so see it. A, you want to okay, see it I've in got your face. Another one. Yeah. So in addition to the Dominion stuff, okay, which we'll we'll see how that how that unfolds, but I, I'm pretty confident the stuff that I've seen is um, unbelievable, and I can't say it because it's in our suit. But um, the other thing is in Nevada, for example, you've got a digital signature recognition machine called a Gillis. Like, I don't know why all these machines and all this crap has to be uh, named so uh, dystopianly. Like, yeah, I yeah. <laughs> in Blade Runner, they're like the Agilis machine will decide if you are yourself. But so the Clark County turned the, the sensitivity of the Agilis machine down um, to 40 percent, which is well under the manufacturer's uh, guidelines saying this is how you, how level how high you have to have it to be accurate. Um, it also says that the signatures that it compares to have to be recorded at 200 DPI. Um, Nevada, the uh, Nevada um, DMV hmm. doesn't record signatures at 200 DPI. They record them at like 40 or something. So the whole state, even if you go by the, the level that this machine was supposed to be run at, they just turned the levels down until it worked. I mean, it's literally, I mean, right there, throw out the state. Like, it's crazy. The fact that you can have a machine, first of all, with, it's against the law to not have human eyes checking uh, every single signature. And they had, because of this mail-in ballot scheme, hundreds of thousands of signatures being checked by a machine that had been turned, that had been calibrated to accept everything. So, I mean, right there, like what? And granted, like, again, this is why I came down here to kind of help with communications and stuff, because mm -hmm. I didn't know that I was sitting out in, uh, in Washington, DC or doing whatever I was doing, promoting the movie. And I follow very, I follow politics pretty closely. I didn't know that. That's been an issue. They they filed uh, several cases about that before the election, and lo and behold, it screwed up the whole election. Let me, I, yeah, I'm curious about some of this tech. Uh, I've got a background in tech as well. Is are human eyeballs better than a 40 percent look from a computer? I don't know, but that's the law. I got okay. Right, I yeah. see. What Thing. I mean, to be honest with you, you know, I don't know. I'm not a right. tech person, and I and these these are the kinds of questions that should have been dealt with before the election, yeah, and they sure, need. Yeah that Clark County made the decision to shove this regulation through 90 days before the election. So tell me what in what industry, OK, in what um, yeah, what type of industry, any kind of like sports world or anything, would the head of your in, uh, of your organization completely change your rules, laws and game plan 90 days before your Super Bowl? Right. I mean, like if you think about uh, Major League Baseball, a competition committee meets in December, at the December winter meetings, right? It's mm -hmm. the second week of December every year. And that's about a month, month and a half, depending on when the season ends after the season ends, and it's about three months before the season starts. So it's pretty early in the process. Yeah. You, so you, we take we take uh, we take sports more seriously than we take our democracy and all of this, as they like to call it, that you know, our protecting our democracy, which frankly it is. But then the other thing is there are way more regulations on gambling machines in mm -hmm. Nevada. Like they have an entire industry of calibrating gambling machines and reviewing them way way more they would if if they set this machine in a casino nobody would accept it because it was just not regulated enough. right and it's the same i mean i've heard that uh this specific argument about mail-in voting like if you really trust mail-in voting take your life savings out of the bank in cash put it in an envelope and mail ah. it to yourself right now <laughs> right right, yeah. right you know what i mean <laughs> like so yeah. it, it's what, what's the difference like is your vote worth everything because everything you are as a human being in america is dependent about upon individual liberty and your voice being able to be expressed at the at the highest possible level right and Absolutely. if that's not the case then what is it exactly that we're doing here? you know what i mean yeah. I, I feel like uh the uh the founders of this country were probably doing pretty well they were pretty comfortable mm -hmm. and they looked around and like you know what this is kind of fucked up we yeah. should probably do something about this yeah Nah, yeah, it takes, you know, it takes people willing to risk their careers and have i mean this is the i actually feel really lucky to be here i mean i was i was with you know the team last night uh we went out to the empty casino and uh we were you know uh celebrating minor minor victories and and i was like you know people it's it, you go through different kinds of emotions obviously like we're out here the last ones on the battlefield fighting internally and externally to get this thing across the finish line and to to really expose the truth. And um, and I'm like, how lucky are we, though? There were we're I'm like one of 20 people on the ground in uh, in one of a very small handful of states that could change history. And it's a cool opportunity. I mean, you know, how often do you get to be 
that fraction of a small group of people to to really change things. No, sure, yeah. it's it's pretty amazing. Um, you know, we're we're looking at sixty days here essentially until uh, the the possible inauguration of Joe Biden. Uh, gun to head. Um, John Milius has gone to your your head. Uh, <laughs> How many times does that happen now with my brothers, uh, you know, playing cowboys and Indians? In oh, house, my God. I, I, I bet it's a million. Can um, you imagine uh, kids in, in uh, like Berkeley, California getting caught? I, I want to do a sketch where kids in Berkeley, California get caught playing cowboys and Indians <laughs> <laughs> just to see how that would go. Not in this lifetime, uh, but gun to head here. We're 60 days out. Um, do you think this gets overturned in your heart of hearts? Yeah. I wouldn't be here if I didn't. Of course I do. So one hundred, you, you can say that yeah, with one hundred percent conviction. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. I always thought I said this on Infowars when I was on there, which is about the only place you can say such a thing and not be yeah, uh, taken sure. whack. But uh, what I said was, I actually think what this is is a. It's kind of a double edged sword where the left basically, you know, the bad guys, if you will, same bad guys as in my movie, et cetera. But um, if they they get they win both ways because basically they could either steal the election and get away with it or they do this whole media routine where the media has crowned the president, which is which is just not how it works. Um, and 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 sweep through with this massive fraud and potentially with this absolutely rigged um, you know, machine system, um, potentially do all of that. And even if we discover it, prove it and overturn it, what you're going to have is a revolution because the left has already done their parties out in Park Slope, Brooklyn and mm. their, their drum circles and like their work <laughs> out in the, uh, and the thing. And so they're all thinking that this is all over and done. And when it gets flipped, they're going to be like, wait, you guys stole it. Yeah, it's exactly. the same part in 2016 with Russia gate. This is mm. the reason I made that movie. You guys stole it. You're the cheaters. You guys are bad. I mean, and they're going to they're going to feel if you if you know how upset they were in 2016. I mean, it's the whole freaking thing's going to blow up. Yeah. I mean, I, I I am just glad I live in, you know, Virginia and not D.C. proper. Oh, shit. Well, Virginia went blue, too, though. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, I so we've been uh, dancing around it all show here. Let's uh, give us your elevator pitch on the movie itself. What, what's the, uh, the? I would say it's the best. Uh, it's a it's a great wrap up of of a thirty thousand foot view of the actual facts of the RussiaGate hoax. Mm -hmm. And when I say RussiaGate hoax, it's the proof that e the entire country was put under a purposeful trance by the media <laughs> to try to convince us <clears throat> of something completely untrue that was provably false, namely that the Trump campaign had anything to do with the Russian uh, Federation. There was absolutely no evidence of this. And the people that were on TV every single night saying so were in classified briefings and classified hearings um, acknowledging that they had no evidence of this. And right, it's not yeah. just people that were on TV talking about how they had no evidence. <clears throat> the main point that Cash makes in the movie, Cash Patel, mm -hmm. who is the new American hero in the, I mean, he's just amazing. Very smart uh, guy, yeah. He's he's a he's the fan favorite, you know. He's the guy. He's my like, favorite. Yes, he's yes. Fan, well, because he's like a no a normal guy. I mean, you want to hang out with him. You want to have a beer with him. And I can I can I can tell you, he's a very cool normal guy. And that's why he's he's the perfect person to see the movie through. But he's also a killer. You know, he's not afraid. Like he's he just powered through this. And they discovered this this uh, the truth of this very simply. They had all these people come in and under oath. It's the heads of the agencies. So it's not just the fact that these people were going out on TV every day saying, um, you know, there's Russian collusion, la, la, la. These are the people who would know if there was because they're the head of the intel community, the head of the FBI, the head of all the various agencies that would have known if there was. And the people that were saying that there was under oath, they said no, all 65 of them. And right. this is the fact that not every conservative TV show doesn't open with that fact and they don't beat it into America's head as much as they beat Russia gate into our heads where it should be like, hi, welcome to Fox News. 65 people wonder, oh, so there was no Russian collusion. And now time for your headlines. Like <laughs> every single day it needs to be said because yeah. nobody knows this. I mean, they had a, they had like a week on it and nobody's even paying attention. The transcripts are out there. That's why I love the commenters on the movie, the the bad, the people that write the bad comments. They're like, mm. this is just lies. Like, have you seen the Senate report? This is lies. And you're like, the transcripts are out there. 
Like <laughs> the transcripts are there. They all said, no, I didn't make this up. That's the great thing is they're like, oh, she's a propaganda artist for Trump. And you're like, actually, I, I love that title. Like I think like the ones my favorite are the people in there that call me Lonnie Riefenstahl, not knowing that she's like my favorite, like female director, because she's amazing. And- <laughs> But um, not because I support the uh, the movement, obviously. But, um, you know, I just think it's an amazing... They, they think that that's like a real dig. And I'm like, oh, I mean, you know, she was pretty successful. But um, but anyways, uh, the uh, the thing that I'm I'm amazed at is they're like, oh, yeah, it's just propaganda. Like, they're, it's it's amazing to me, these people. Like, you're like, it's it's proven. It's right there. I know. I didn't have to say one thing in that movie. Everybody else, uh, every single person that was speaking was referring to facts that can be verified. Yeah, I only heard your voice one time in that movie. Um, <laughs> oh, God, I was going to take that out because I don't like being in my own movie. Again, I know. Right? I was going to ask you that in, in a documentary film like they usually the, whoever is directing the documentary. I don't I don't do them. So um, but whoever is directing the documentary, Sometimes you'll hear their questions. Uh, it's rare yeah. or it's it's really important, right? Yeah. And I only heard yeah. you, you only had one question in that movie. Yeah. yeah. yeah with, I, okay, technically there's two, but um, I think the one you're referring to is when I asked Jack Langer. So the Babylon Bee article came out, or the, the, the Fresno Bee article came out when, and he's like, the cocaine yachts prostitute piece? And I was like, yep. <laughs> the only uh, cocaine yachts prostitute thing I want to hear about is Fred Smoot. Let's be real, right? Yeah. From, from the Minnesota Vikings, <laughs> yeah. one or, of the best. Or if anything leaks from DiCaprio but and how, his, his crew. How funny was uh, the fact that they, so the fact that they accuse him of having anything to do with that, at the end of the movie, if I actually had like an insane budget, I wanted to rent a yacht fly cash jack langer and devin nunez to the yacht and film them on like a drone like with like hookers and blow and like all this stuff and like have like a hip-hop ending like with literally devin nunez like pouring champagne on a girl like, oh that would have been great are you kidding me that would have been amazing um that been, i don't think he would have done it he's he's no. actually very conservative i don't you, think he would have done you, it. if you need to do something like that you could probably hire okay. prestige you worldwide guys, though right yeah our our co-host directed a uh, dan crenshaw's uh campaign oh, that's video what it is. Yeah. Yes. exactly yeah exactly yeah. Um, uh, I was I was curious when I was watching it. Um, did you reach out to any of the CNN reporters? Because look, they made a fucking living off of this for three years. Yeah. Um, did you reach out to them and said, "Hey, man, uh, Jake Tapper, or any of those guys, are you are you willing to get on camera and actually talk about this?" Because I remember the Project Veritas thing with the nothing burger from Van Jones. Yeah. That RussiaGate was a nothing burger. Did you reach out to any of those guys? Well, one thing we have, uh, we do have, so again, we're going to put out the extended cut uh, because the first cut of the movie was four and a half hours long. Um, And we'll put it out in a series so you can kind of dive into whatever section you're interested in, like whether it's like the Flynn background or the media stuff, whatever. Um, In that section, one of the interviews we have is with the Project Veritas um, reporter who Mm. did that, got that moment. Because I was going to have Van Jones in it. We reached out to him. We couldn't get him. I was going to have all these people in it. I was going to have a lot more people that were um, kind of in the middle or, or had something to say from a different point of view. Like I wanted um, like Glenn Greenwald and Matt Taibbi and mm-hmm. Matt Taibbi was about to do it. He still might do an interview with us about the movie. Um, but uh, yeah, a lot of them just didn't respond. Um, we didn't go after, to be honest with you, we didn't go after the journalists as hard because it was really more about the lawmakers and the, you know, we had a, what we called on our calendar, bad guys day, which was hilarious. But yeah. we really, we did reach out to, you know, I'm not going to mention them each by name, but you can pretty much figure out who the main people we were talking about in the movie. Um, like obviously doing our journalistic due, due diligence to reach out to people. True. Um and I would have put them in it. I would have recorded the call or or, um, or had them down for an interview. I would have flown to their house, whatever they want. Like, I absolutely would have had them in it. Um, but, you know, uh, I, I, you know, I'm amazed there hasn't been a response from any of these people to the movie because, you know, they know it exists. Um, yeah, but I mean, I guess- it's staring at you right in the face. So as soon as you turn on Amazon, that movie is front and center. <laughs> Dead serious. Like, uh, yeah. Because after our listeners hit us up over and over again, when I went to watch it with my wife that night, uh, I turned it on. I was like, let me let me hit the search button. I was like, well, nope, no need for that. It's it's right there oh, it's right. on the homepage. That's awesome. Yeah. Either it's listening to you and it's putting it up there or it actually is really up there. It's it is. Like- that's probably it. Like uh, they've got to be listening to me. And it, look, it works yeah. clearly. So that's OK, as long as it's up there, as long as it's available, I'm good. I mean, yeah, the the popularity of it is just out of control. Like I said, we. 
I had a plan. I thought that that's what we would do. You know, I didn't reserve a lot of the budget. I mean, you guys know you do movie stuff. Mm -hmm. I didn't do the advertising reserve. I didn't do promotional. Um, we barely did theaters um, because, you know, I, I've talked to a lot of people that did put movies out this year and nobody's recouping what they're making by putting out stuff. No. In the it's all, you know, so I, we put it out in a couple, it's still playing in a handful of theaters, which you can see on our website. Um, and, uh, but, um, but yeah, we, we, ha I had this uh, inclination that I was like, if this movie is actually good, if we actually do a really good job and, and give people the ability to look at the Russiagate hooks from the 30,000 foot view, which, which you kind of need to see the chess moves, right? Like, the reason I think it works and that people who have who feel like they're bored of Russiagate and they've heard it all actually love this movie is because you have to take the step back to see all the moves. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can't you're, when you're in it, when you're like, oh, today this happened and then they declassified this and whatever. You don't see the maneuvers and the counter maneuvers by the mm. different teams. But when you take that step back and you're like, here's the last four years spell, you know, push back. Um, it's very clear what they did. And it's important to have that perspective, especially now, because they're doing the same thing with COVID. They're doing the same thing with um, with the election. Um, so uh, well, it's, like so, playing, yeah. it's like trying to retrace a game of telephone, I guess. Yeah. You know yeah. I mean? You're trying yeah. to figure out who said what, where to influence what. Sometimes it's just mm -hmm. misunderstandings. Oftentimes it's intentional. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's an intentional exploitation of the proclivity for people to misunderstand things. Right. So it, yeah, it is, it's it's very part. it's very interesting to go back and look through all that stuff. It is. Mm -hmm. uh, the other part about it, too, was um, for me personally, like, you know, that story they kept up in the media for three years. Um, I, Dan and I didn't buy it from the get go. Like uh, prostitutes pissing on a bed in Russia was the craziest thing of all time. And it, it just seems so far fetched. And then, you know, how obviously, great is it? how great is it in the movie when. Um, OK, so when Devin like retells the part where he discovered that. So he is mm -hmm. like such a conservative. He like, seemed embarrassed by it. Like you know, he, he yeah. literally like he's describing it and he's like, and I opened that part of the testimony and I was like, whoa, who does what is that? Couldn't be real. I mean, I've never heard of such a thing. And you're just like, oh my God, he's so precious. Like he's, he's it was really funny because you could tell he was embarrassed by it. He was just like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. should I even be talking like, about this? And is this real? And yeah. how did this happen? But uh with with that, like the, the interesting part about the whole Russiagate thing, as soon as the impeachment trial was over, boom, mm -hmm. that was it. I mean, you never heard one single second about it from the media. They were on to the next thing, which was COVID. Well, literally week by week so what they did is um actually they killed russia gate and the next day started ukraine and impeachment so those are two separate hoaxes they're somewhat entangled but they're separate um and you never heard another word about russian collusion until yeah you heard a little bit about it after the ukraine thing which i people are like oh you should make the sequel about right now and i'm like yeah i mean i'm in i'm in one of the parts of it like i, I suppose i could but um, but the other the other thing is, you know, the next the next hoax was actually Ukraine gate. And I have a lot of friends that were heavily involved in that. Um, and then literally, I remember this week because I already knew I was going to make the movie. Ukraine gate had ended. They had announced that the Biden was going to be the um, the other candidate. Mm -hmm. I was like, OK, we're running unopposed. This is great. <laughs> um, life was good. People were making money. The birds were singing. And I remember being in D.C. on my balcony, smoking cigarettes. And I was like, huh, these are pretty good. Like, this is crazy. Like, this is a <laughs> good year. Like, I was like, I'm going to go make this movie. Everything's great. I go back into work because I was still working at State Department. I think I had not resigned yet. And uh, yeah. And and um, and and they're like, there's a disease in China and uh, we're going to bring our embassy home and uh, or our, our consulate home and blah 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 and like all this stuff and i was like oh my god i was like are you kidding me like now there's like a a flu that yeah. i have to work like are you joking well you know china's I trying to blame it on italy now they're referring back to yeah. a study that yeah. happened in the uh the latter parts of 2019 where it, it I, I haven't looked into it enough i guess but it does seem like there's a test showing that some of the antibodies for the novel coronavirus were present in italy a long time before the coronavirus became a thing yeah, because it's the oh, flu worldwide. and I'm I'm convinced I had it in 2019 there's so many people that I, I'm, I'm sure I had it in 2019 I'm sure I had it 10 times over I get sick a lot but um I just can't believe that they I mean it it really scares me how many actually conservatives and supposedly free-thinking people and not just not just people on the right but anybody is is actually wandering the streets with masks on 
Yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy to me. I, and I, I just, I refuse. Mm. I've actually been really lucky because I was, you know, on the road to make the movie. I was, I was locked down for about three weeks because it was what, March, April, uh, we were still raising money yep. and uh, getting everything in order and hiring people. I mean, we made that movie in less than a hundred, less than 90 days, which yeah. is insane, by the way. Like, yeah. Oh, it's, it's, insane. it's pure chaos. Uh, March, chaos. yeah. March 12th was when it kind of all shut down. Um, yeah. So I resigned end of March, started making the movie April, May, like whatever. Um, the, I was actually able to kind of be, I was traveling because we were doing the movie. I was working. I hired people that otherwise would not have had jobs because mm. it was out in, you know, they were in LA. Uh, they're, they're all film industry people mm. um, and everything shut down. So I was able to get my, my top notch people out to Virginia. And I had this, like, ha I felt like I had like a dorm room of like conservative filmmakers. It was like total chaos. Like everybody like living in the same house. It was nuts, but, um, but it was great. And so I've been lucky to have, I got to keep my life, right? Like I got to keep doing what I want to do. I can't imagine being one of these people who's been shut in yeah. for this entire time. Like same. what? Yeah. yeah just po podcasts crazy. were deemed essential. So we got lucky and out of our <laughs> media company, for real, out of our media company, uh, you know, we we do about 125 shows a month out of here, so it was business as usual. We we wow. did have we did have to make a group decision though of like, hey, if one of us gets it, what do you want to do? And our decision was that we were all just going to make out when that happened. Yeah, I think that's probably the best decision. That's Men, what I would. Herd women, immunity, and, and that was yeah. it. Because I I got it the second week of March, and uh, you know, I, it is what it was. Everybody moved on. Everybody kept their jobs, and you know, we worked. Yeah. Um, we we just yeah. kept working, and I think people should have the option to do that. But, yeah, uh, you know, because America and like I forgot that thing they beat in your head all the time where you don't have anything if you don't have your freedoms, except if you get sick and then yeah. you don't have freedoms. And you're like, no, that's not part of it. Like yeah. if I want to get Ooh. sick and, and run through the streets uh, in the middle of a snowstorm in wet clothes and get a cold, I am actually allowed to do that. Like and I can you know what I mean? It's it's just completely insane. It's it's and, you know, I feel really bad for the um, like I said, we went out, we we haven't had a lot of time to do any, I haven't left this building and um, since the election pretty much. Uh, but we went out, walked, you know, we looked at some of the sites in Vegas and whatever the other night. And like, it's just dead. And these people, um, Vegas was already really hard hit by the housing crisis, mm -hmm. the housing bubble, because it was one of the top places that everybody bought a summer house. It was really cheap property. They had a huge, um, when I was even working here in 2016, the economy was really hurting people. Right. Uh, and now they just got back, you know, they just got back into a swing of things under the Trump administration. And then look at this. It's just, I feel so bad for these people. And they're some of the best people I've ever met. I mean, the reason I really joined the administration and like the thing that kept me going, not to sound like a politician or to sound like a dope, but it's actually true, is I would sit there and I think about what would these moms and dads and families that I did door knocking with or that came and like got bumper stickers for their car at the campaign, what would they want me to do while I'm working here in this giant government and, and getting them to stop spending so much money on horrible shit? Like, and I just feel so bad for these people. Like, I love these people. I love my Trump people in Clark County. They're just, they're my favorite, favorite people on the planet. Well, so look, I just, it makes, breaks my heart. It really does. I'm, that's why I'm here. I'm pissed because I know that we won the election here and I want them to get, you know, I want their voices to be heard. Well, ho hopefully uh, what you guys are searching for will come out soon and uh, there will be an answer. We found it. And it's, it's I know, I, but you know, we all want the answer and a finality to this. Um, and yeah. I think that's part of it as well. Now's the point in the show we get to the drinking bro of the week, which is someone who has inspired you or helped you become the person you are today. Who would you like to give the drinking bro of the week to? Um, you know what? I think it's appropriate for me to give it to Devin Nunez because the man loves his wine mm -hmm. and he is, you can't get through a conversation with him without him mentioning the new kind of wine he tried and like this, that, or the other. And the man's a hero. He stood up when, um, when nobody else would. And the thing that's really important about him is, you know, it's not like he was a MAGA guy exactly in the beginning. It's not like he was like, you know, Matt Gates is kind of known as uh, like a Trump congressman, right? right? Like he kind of came mm -hmm. in with that movement and he's our guy. We love Matt Gates. Obviously Matt Gates is phenomenal. He, there's a lot more of him in the extended cut. But Devin Nunes was a fairly normal conservative. Like he was, a, he was a, a fairly hawkish on foreign policy. He was, a pretty normal establishment ish conservative. He just didn't do the wrong thing. He just saw the real information and he actually had 
um, the wherewithal to, to know right from wrong and to say the truth. And everybody turned against him. And, um, you know, the guy is an absolute courageous hero. And uh, I know he loves his uh, his various wines. We the, the whole crew had dinner at his house when we were out in the district shooting the, the farm stuff and yeah. the stuff on his family farm. And um, he is he can at a certain point in the evening, the man is solely focused on on the wine. It is it is the only topic of conversation, the wine and the tri tip. Like, that's all he wants to talk about. Oh, is he, like, from, oh, is he from Northern California or something? Because they yeah, won't no, shut it's, it's the a, fuck up about tri tip. Yeah, yeah, that's it. No, he literally in the middle of a dinner, he turns. We were talking about like, you know, really interesting stuff because the guy's like he's telling us how they uncovered all this stuff. And he's telling us about, you know, being a congressman and all this, all this stuff that the whole crew, we've never heard, you know, that they, they've never heard. I worked in DC for a while. But it was really entertaining. And then all of a sudden he just turns and he's like, you know what you got to do? You got to put this piece of the tri-tip on your fork and then put the wine. You got to eat it like this. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was very good. It was really good. And his wife is an amazing cook. And like, yeah, they're just a lovely, really, really awesome people, really normal, awesome people. That's awesome. Uh, That's so, yeah, awesome. That uh, well, look, if you have not seen the movie, it is The Plot Against the Presidents. Uh, it is a great film. Uh, mm -hmm. It is available for free on Amazon Prime. And, uh, and tell the other outlets that they can find it um, and let, you, let, let the people know where they can find you on social media. Uh, at our Twitter account, which is very, um, you should follow it because it is, it's my only outlet and it's very snarky and uh, it gets up to no good. I'm sure, you know, it's being tracked by every intelligence agency on the planet, but um, it's at P A T P movie dot. Uh, that's the handles mm -hmm. at P A T P movie, which is plot against the president mm -hmm. movie. That's also our website, which is www.patpmovie.com or plot against the president movie.com. They all go to the same place. And on the website, we have merch now, which is actually really cool. We have four posters that are actually very tasteful and beautiful and don't make your room look like a dorm room. Look, anytime and anybody refers to a piece of media as tasteful, <laughs> usually there's nudity, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what are we talking about here? So it's, exactly? it's tasteful no, it's nudity. Just president. It's just the president. No, it's, uh, it's, it's just got beautiful photos. It's very well done. It looks like a James Bond poster. It's cool. Oh, it's, cool. Not, it's not boomer. It's cool. <laughs> uh, uh, so it, it's great and then we also have all this uh i don't know why but we have like a lot of other merch like in addition to like t-shirts we have like hats and like the funniest thing that we have which i think i kept just because i saw the mock-up for it and i was like that's so outrageously ridiculous we have to do it which is there's plot against the president joggers which i'm like yeah. why do we have that? But they're so silly and it's actually everyone loves them. So anyway, um, so yes, we got merch now and the DVDs are going to be coming out uh, available on our website and probably on Amazon if they don't screw us. Um, uh, DVDs are going to be great for the holidays. I didn't even know the DVDs were still a thing. And Damn. so I was told that actually Dinesh and these other sort of larger mainstream uh, conservative filmmakers they actually make all their money on DVD distro. We did, when we did Range 15, it was the same way. Um, uh, I wrote and directed this movie called Range 15, which is how we all met. Um, veteran, conservative, all that stuff. And uh, yeah, the DVDs uh, to this day still sell uh, over yeah. and over again. And it's it's mostly because people want to support, um, yeah. you know? Uh, they want to keep it. They're worried because you know what? They get this feeling that if it's digital and it's streaming, it'll be gone at some mm. point because it'll be censored or whatever. Mm -hmm. And if you have it, you really have it. And that's true. And so we'll, we will have DVDs uh, ready for the holidays shortly. And um, yeah, Vimeo, Vimeo on demand, Amazon on demand. It's about to be available on a ton of other platforms too, like iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, Pre Premiere, a ton of cable channels. Um, it's still playing in theaters. And uh, yeah, it's 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 everywhere. Go see it. Leave a review if you Absolutely. like it. Leave a review because um, the the bad bots uh, found us when the president tweeted it, and uh, we have to, we have to counteract the bad bots. But we're still super high rated, and and it's it's crazy reviews. It's they great. can't stop everybody. Well, the or, good news on it, can. at least on Amazon, you can tell whether or not the person actually interacted with the video if they left yeah, the review. Easily. Right? Yep. Yeah. Um, you, know, you, you can read the reviews. It's so it's the people yeah. that actually saw it write these beautiful essays about America. And then right. the people that didn't see it are like, this is propaganda and lies. Well, I mean, Here's so for Amazon products on their on their website, if you look down at the reviews on their products, you can tell like it'll say verified customer, Higher. which yeah. means that person bought that literally bought that product. I don't understand mm -hmm. why they can't do that 
or people leaving book and Possibly. movie reviews? So they're a little bit better than IMDb. Like IMDb, absolutely. First of all, the only people that follow IMDb or know what it is work in Hollywood in some way because right. absolutely no one else gives a shit about that website. Yeah. So like the fact that there, it's super <laughs> dumb. I don't even know what the rating is there. I won't even look at it because I hate that website. Mm. Um, the uh, they they're just awful. But the Amazon is supposed to be a little bit more accurate because they're supposed to require you to have at least bought the movie but because it's free on amazon prime sometimes yeah. they just click on it or whatever but you know i mean they can down they can they can click it all they want i still get paid so <laughs> that's awesome uh yeah. amanda millius you were fucking unbelievably entertaining hey, let's this do. was the fastest oh, so fucking much. hour there is yeah for having me on I'm this a, is awesome i'm so actually glad. looking into the, uh, the reviews of your movie right now on amazon as a matter of fact and the good thing that's about what, this what's the number at you How can many are, you right? can sort them by review so they're all either five or one yeah. <laughs> right? there's no, no middle in that no yeah. surprise there uh yeah. all, pretty much most of the ones i would say about 90 percent of the ones i'm seeing are not verified purchase yeah so that makes sense yeah what's the what's the total number of reviews right now uh it's like 13 or it's a 12 wow. 12 wow. 12, holy shit Do are you, you kidding me many, yeah. Yeah, like do you know how many reviews um so look at tell me how many trump card has Trump card? That's yeah. uh, is that Dinesh D'Souza? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm just curious for the comparing the uh, budget. Stand by. I'll put it I, in I'm for, glad for... he does his thing. I just you know I don't have a three million dollar ad budget. Trump card I, has thirty two hundred. Yeah, yeah. Not even not even close. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing about Amazon. Dude, it's hard to get reviews. People don't understand. Like shit. We're lucky to have get a hundred for a book. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're we're lucky to get a hundred for a bestseller for Christ's sake. So uh, the top it's a crit big deal. The top so they they sort these on Amazon by positive and critical reviews. Mm -hmm. The top critic the top positive review is a verified purchaser, yep. and mm -hmm. talks about how they're not they weren't really a Trump fan, but this stuff is fucked up. Blah blah blah. The top critical review just says should be labeled as fiction. And then there's, they, they haven't, they clearly have not seen it. They have not seen the film, yeah. right? No. No, how dumb is that? Where they, there's so many people that like, they're like, this should be labeled a comedy or fiction because it's fake. And you're like, tell me how it's fake. Tell me one thing in the movie that isn't real. You're like, it's real people telling yeah. the story of what happened to them. That's the thing I actually argued with folks about this because I was like, look, it's not an advocacy movie. It's not like as much as I love advocacy movies, I would make one. I'd make a second amendment movie in a day. Like I'm a super, like if I was gonna pick my political issue, I pick immigration, second amendment and foreign policy, right? Like mm -hmm. those are my big things. Um, it's not an advocacy movie. It's not like, this is what will happen if the second amendment is taken away from you. Like it's a movie, I'm not, I don't have a point of view in it. I am asking the guys that were in the hearing telling me what happened, mm -hmm. that's it. Like that's the movie <laughs> it's, I yeah. mean, it's not but it's like it's so ridiculous they're like oh it's fake you're like what is fake tell me one thing that's fake it's, it's pretty so straightforward i look it's yeah. it's a pretty straightforward film and again it's it's not like uh uh the other guy's movie where it's just you know some shadowy stuff <laughs> you and... guys, did you see the um did you see the comey rule i couldn't get through the whole thing oh but that's like a gazillion dollar showtime doc where they had those extremely strange actors yeah. uh playing different people you know and how pissed off so comey was that that he got played by a fat jeff daniels i bet like i'm, I I'm sure he was how could they angry. i that was just you i don't know how they haven't been sued to all hell i mean it was like the most incorrect just i mean that movie was no one liked that movie and of course you know what's crazy twitter did um they let them have ad buys they facebook let them promote um mm -hmm whatever we have not yet been allowed to advertise the movie and again we don't have a huge advertising budget but we were going to do some social ads like of course like we've got you know a lot of really big influencers in the movie um they wouldn't let us do any ads not one social ad for the movie because it was close to the election and they were like oh this is this could impact the election and you're like well yeah so could showtime's um the Comey rule, but that or was everything on or, Showtime or, is, is a left documentary. Or James way. Comey yeah. posting a picture of himself the morning of the election on Twitter wearing Biden a goddamn shirt. Biden shirt. Yeah, the Biden shirt and then the the uh, the cup of Joe that he had. Yeah. But uh, yeah, right. the Comey Biden. rule. When he goes down in the kitchen and he's talking to his family and the daughter's crying and the wife is crying, you gotta Jim, do something. Jim, please don't do this, <laughs> Jim. And it's just Jim, like you're just, you just have so much integrity. I can't deal yeah, with it. Seriously, but speaking of. I really enjoyed that part of it. Uh, hearing about <laughs> Comey being mad that Fat Jeff Daniels played him because it reminded me of John Goodman playing the Babe back in the day. Yeah, John Goodman, 
six three. He's a tall guy, but yeah. he, it, during that movie, he weighed about three hundred and twenty pounds, three three twenty. Uh, Babe Ruth to people for for some reason, people think Babe Ruth was some fat guy. He was six two, two fifteen. Right, right. Yeah. He's not fat, but yeah. he drank and fucking smoked cigars and banged whores and did drugs all the time. But he was in shape. Was yeah, in- when John Goodman has to lose weight to play Babe Ruth, you know you've got problems. Well, he could play it now, so. uh, Righteous Gemstones level. Yeah, John Goodman. He's he's slimmed down quite a bit. He has. Yeah, he has. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> pretty accurate job of uh playing i mean he wasn't playing my dad but it was the the big lebowski thing where he was playing the coen brothers version of my dad yeah, yeah. it was actually for years my brothers and i were like um nobody knew that that was on purpose because there's no one talks about anything in our family so um my brothers and i were like god how funny is it we loved watching that movie because we'd be like this is so crazy this is just like dad and like we've never seen anything like this and then like years later my brother ethan who's a who's a da um discovered that this was the case because he was googling himself for something he was like doing a trial or something and he he googled ethan milius and it came this article came up that said joel and ethan cohen based the big lebowski walter off of of john milius that's how we figured it out well now i kind of want to uh i want to do whatever we can do to get your dad to move here and just hang out with us every day. I know. I, look, uh, Cause I want to hang out with Walter chair right in the middle. You could just put him right where that elephant is and uh, bring him here. We'll go. And- Alex Jones studio is about five minutes down the street from oh, us. You guys are in Austin too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, by the way, I didn't know that. when We're- I, when I hit you back up, I saw your name on the conference board uh, in the conference room as, as the guest, you were two before us. Yeah. So we yeah. just missed oh, you yeah, that yeah. night, the night after the election, yeah, yeah. we went That's- on, I think our slot was at uh, eight o'clock that night. I think we went on at eight with Alex. And yeah, you were on eight, yeah. at like three o'clock or something like that. Um, but I saw yeah, your no, name and I was like, shit, I got to reach back out to her. I want to get her on the show. Yeah. No, and I was, I don't even, I think I missed your first uh, note because it was probably on the plot against the president Instagram, which I don't read and manage as much as my own. But then mm-hmm. I do manage the Twitter. I mean, everybody kind of manages the Twitter. It's like a free for all. Um, but uh but yeah, no, I, uh, I, I couldn't, I, yeah, I wish I'd known you guys were, I would totally have come in because I was, I was in Austin, right? Yeah, it was the day after the election. That's, that's how I got, ended up going to Phoenix. And like, I have actually this off footage of the Phoenix rally because I was walking in behind Alex. I was walking in with her team and um, they're already, the, the crowd is already chanting, not knowing he's going to be there. The crowd is already chanting 1776 and he gets out and he has his bullhorn and he puts it up in the moment they hear his voice and he's like, the answer to 1984 is 1776. And I was like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. I, the people went completely insane. Ballistic. It was like, yeah. Cernovich was saying it too. He was like, it was like the Beatles had come in. And it's true because people haven't seen him until he started doing these rallies again. Like people haven't seen him outside of the show, like yeah. super publicly. It's the shy comms, Amanda. Well, and, 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 <laughs> I, think, I think you need to understand what's going on in Vegas and Clark County. Ladies and uh, gentlemen. Alex, like, yeah. Alex has become, uh, for better or worse, essentially a bottle of water in the middle of the desert. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And a lot no, and of a lot of people are still seeing it from kind of far away and they're not sure if it's real yet or not. Yeah. I think that Joe Rogan interview where Rogan fact checked him and proved everything he said was true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Over the yeah. course of two and a half hours was very helpful for that. I don't yeah. know how many people on the left are receptive, obviously, but uh he's There's people on the right aren't receptive. There's like I had true. I got uh you know, a lot of folks uh, that I'm very good friends with would be really upset if they found out that I went on, you know, the unusual shows. But oh, I'm yeah. like, that's where I, where I come from. I, I come from the weird parts of the Internet. That's how I got into politics. Like, you know, I, I, I love that stuff. But um, but yeah, I know he's amazing. The, the main meme of 2020 was like 2020 is the year we found out Alex Jones was right about everything. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Look, we, we won't keep you. We know you got to get uh, out and, and stop uh, the, the stop vote the here. Yeah. yeah. So let us know. Uh, you're welcome to come back on the show anytime. And uh, I'll, we'll text you Joe's information uh, yeah. later on. And uh, and again, I, I know I, I put this in my message to you, but your father was one of the reasons that I got into making movies. Uh, in particular, uh, obviously, he wrote uh, one of my all-time faves, which was Apocalypse Now, and uh, yeah. one of the very best to ever do it, in my opinion. It is very, very cool to see you following in his footsteps. Uh, thank you for thank being you. here today, Amanda. Please go check out The Plot Against the President. 
uh, on Amazon Prime or wherever else you may find it in this world. For D'Anthony and D'Anthony Holloway, I am Ross Patterson. We are the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone. <laughs>